So I will be starting this talk, but uh, João will, will go through there. Uh, through that. Um, here we will talk about uh, volume snapshots on, K on Apache Cloud Stack, uh, focusing on, cloud on KVM. Uh, and also we will take a look on some uh, concepts that are being used to allow us to work with incremental snapshots for KVM. Uh, so I'll take it from here. Uh, so let's start off by defining what is a snapshot, so just so that everyone here already knows it. I'm sure that most of you already know what it is, but whatever. So a snapshot is a point in time uh, capture of a volume. And by default, the snapshot is copied to the secondary storage. So de by default, snapshots are volume snapshots, actually, are backups. Uh, VM snapshots work differently, so they are not really backups. Um, yeah, also snapshots, as they are a copy of a volume, they may be also used to create other volumes and to create templates. That's it. So how does it work on a implementation level? Well, originally, uh, snapshots were taken by the, the original implementation used full VM snapshots, which meant that the memory of the virtual machine would be saved, and also all of the volumes would be saved instead of just the one that we needed. So this process was long. It was costly in terms of storage. It also created downtime, because while we are saving the virtual machine memory, we actually have to freeze it. So a few years back, it was refactored. And currently, when we are taking a volume snapshot, we only, only the affected volume, only the volume that we are snapshotting will be affected. And what we do is that we create an overlay on top of the volume. And so that the virtual machine will start writing to the, this overlay and not the original volume. Then we will copy it to wherever we need it, and then it will be merged back. Uh, that's the process for the a running virtual machine. The stopped virtual machine process is the same because we just need to copy it somewhere else. Now, there's a this process is a lot better than the original one because there's no downtime, and we only have to snapshot the volume that we want. But it still has one big problem, which is if we are taking recurring snapshots, uh, we'll all, we will be saving a lot of duplicated data. So let's say, for example, that we have a, a virtual machine which has a single volume, uh, which has, let's say, 500 gigabytes of, of data. And this volume might grow, let's say, 20 gigabytes per day. So if we take a daily snapshot and in a four-day period, Using the full snapshot process, we will have, at the end of our four-day period, around two terabytes of data on our storage, but most of it will be duplicated because only around 10, 20 gigabytes was actually changed. So instead of doing that, what we can do is take a first snapshot, which will be a full one, to store all of the state, and then the next snapshots will be only we will only save the data that was changed. So at the end of our four-day period, using incremental snapshots, we'll actually only use 560 gigabytes of data, and which is, for this case, around 25% of usage. So how can you do that? Well, we'll be using Liberty APIs to do this. Uh, we'll use a, an API called Begin Backup. And in order to use this to create incremental snapshots, we need the volumes to be uh, on QCall2 uh, format. Yeah. Uh, and we need this for two reasons. First, the, in order to create incremental snapshots, uh, Libert will use the feature of backing, uh, backing chains. So during the snapshot process, we will create a new overlay, as I uh, gave an example before. And another thing that is used by Libert to create this snapshot is a bitmap. So a bitmap will be a data structure that will save all the dirty blocks that were written to 
since the bitmap was created. Also, Libvirt has an abstraction for bitmaps, so we don't actually work with bitmaps. We use checkpoints, but they are basically the same. Uh, and as I gave you an example before, we always need to have a full snapshot in the, in the, at the start of our snapshot chain so that we can start incrementing from it. And although Libvirt helps us in creating the backups, it doesn't uh, help us managing these chains. So we have to do this. I mean, CloudStack does it. We just had to implement it. So before going into the workflows that uh, will be implemented in CloudStack, I wanted to bring a little discussion about whether we should be using a limited or limited uh, chains. So in the example I gave you before, we had a full backup, and then all the next backups would be incremental ones. But the problem with this is that if we keep doing that, uh, there's a risk of either losing one of the backups in the middle of the chain, and that would make us lose all of the newer ones, because they depend on each other. And another problem is, is that we have, if we have a big, uh, really big chain and want to restore it, we will have to merge, like, let's say 100 files into one, and this take a, can take a lot of time. So instead of doing that, we can do something that already uh, exists in CloudStack for the Zen server incremental snapshot feature, which is limiting the chains. So by default, uh, CloudStack limits a snapshot chain to 16, if I'm not mistaken. And that means that on the 17th snapshot, it will create a new full, full snapshot, which will be completely separate from the other chain. So about the workflows that will be implemented. The creation workflow is a bit more complex than the current one, but it's, it's kind of simple at the same time. So for a running VM, uh, all we have to do is call the API that I just mentioned, the begin backup API. And also, in it, we have to tell Libvirt to create a checkpoint so that when we are when we create the next uh, snapshot, we can reference this checkpoint so that it, it only copies what was changed since that checkpoint. So for the first backup, we do that. For the next one, we do the same thing, but also referencing the latest checkpoint. And the only other ca caveat here is that virtual machines in CloudStack, they are transient. So whenever a user stops a virtual machine, it's actually, actually undefined, and Libvirt has no, no reference to it. And in order to use this API, we have to reference the virtual machine. So what we do when we have a volume that is unattached or attached to a stopped virtual machine is that we create a dummy virtual machine that will be paused. It, won't, it will not mess with the, our volume. And we just use it as a vessel to call the APIs that we need. And that's basically it. So what if we want to delete a snapshot? Well, if it is the latest snapshot, it has no children, we can simply delete it and it's no problem. But if it has uh, any snapshots that depend on it, it has any children, then we can't really just erase the file without losing data. So what we do is if the user tell, uh, asks us to delete a snapshot that has dependencies, uh, we will tell the user that it's deleted, but we actually won't we'll keep it in storage. And a snapshot will only be actually removed from storage when all of its children are dead. This is, uh, just as a note, this is also the process that is used by Zenser, uh, on the Zone Server plugin. Uh, so reverting a snapshot is, uh, incremental snapshot is quite simple. As long as during the creation, uh, we keep the backing chains uh, managed. So all, what all we have to do is call a single API that will convert this volume, these files, into a single volume for us to use, so it's pretty simple. Uh, also, a bunch of other processes are affected by this, but uh, I'll not go into detail here because we don't have that much time. And, but basically, uh, virtual machine migration, 
uh, volume migration, either code or hot. Uh, also, <coughs> volume attach and detach, and template creation from snapshots. So about the limitations of this feature. Well, as I said before, we are using a uh, an API called Begin Backup, and this API uh, started supporting incremental snapshots, incremental backups from se uh, libvirt 7.6. So, and it also needs to have Kimu 6.1. So, your environment needs the, at least these versions to use this feature. Uh, also, no matter what type of uh, chain we are using, limited or not, after doing a virtual machine migration or a snapshot reversion, we will have to start a new chain because these processes, they erase the bitmaps that are stored on the volume, so we can really continue taking incremental snapshots. Uh, and finally, for the limitations, this in, this in this first stage will only be for file-based uh, storages meaning local, NFS, and shared mode point. RBD, meaning Ceph, uh, cluster LVM, and other appliances are not supported currently, but we already have plans on adding support for Ceph storage, but the, this is a whole other topic and a whole other talk, because the implementation will be completely different. Also, another future implementation that I'm already working on is atomic disk-only virtual machine snapshots for KVM, which will allow us to take a snapshot from all of the volumes at the same time. This kind of already exists, but it's not supported for NFS nor local storage, and the current implementation needs a, a little bit of work, in my opinion. And finally, another, another feature, future extension that we plan to do is do the same work we are doing with KVM and allow native imp incremental snapshots for VMware so that all three main hypervisors on cloud stack are support supporting this feature. And I think that's it. So just to be clear about that point, uh, Jean commented that by default, cloud stack backups the snapshot to another area. Um, we, uh, when it was implemented, uh, CloudStack had the snapshot API that would do a snapshot on, on the volume, but uh, it would not be copied to another uh, area. Uh, later, it was uh, configuration was introduced to copy those uh, those volumes, uh, those snapshots to the secondary storage. So when we talk about snapshots on cloud stack, mostly we are talking about backups. So uh, we don't have a clear process of only working with snapshots, volume snapshots. What we have is our backups. Also, when the configuration is false, uh, it will also copy uh, the snapshot to another to another folder, but it's still on the same uh, parameter store. So it, it might be confusing at first, but once we understand the workflow, it's uh, become quite quite clear. Well, so does anyone have any questions? <laughs>